channel trouble free in this video i'm going to explain you about the data pre-processing in the subject of data mining so basically what is data pre-processing what are the steps involved in data pre-processing and in those steps also we have some sub steps everything i'm going to explain in this video so this video is gonna become a bit longer i don't want to divide it into sub parts just because of the reason that i have created the thumbnails already so i have to again uh, you know edit the numbers in the thumbnails and all so i'm becoming a bit lazy in that excuse me for that so let's get into the video now so data pre-processing is nothing but the process of transforming or you can say converting raw data into an understandable format okay suppose if you are having uh, the marks of a students marks of 60 students in data mining subject then all the names of the students will be like a b c and so on up to z and the marks will be in this way 90 91 and so on up to 100 so the names of the students are separate the marks of the students are separate all of them are in a some random format then can you understand which person got how many marks no right so that is what raw data means an understandable format is nothing but you divide you make it as a table or you make it as a chart or you make it as a graph whatever it is so that the data can be un understood okay that is what understandable format so the process of converting the raw data into an understandable format is called data pre-processing got it in data pre-processing we actually have four steps okay data cleaning data integration data reduction and data transformation these are the four steps we have in data pre-processing got it so let us in detail learn about each and every step now okay first step is the data cleaning so in data cleaning what will happen is it is a process of removal of incorrect incomplete okay inaccurate data it also replaces the missing data if there is any incorrect data or if there is any incomplete data or inaccurate data or inconsistent data or any error in the data whatever it is so those data can be removed and also it will replace the missing values that is in case of missing values if there are any empty spaces in those spaces you can add the values got it that is about data cleaning okay so in data cleaning we have two things actually okay as i already said you will have handling missing values and handling noisy data so missing values is nothing but empty spaces noisy data is nothing but this incorrect or incomplete or inaccurate or error data whatever it is will come under noisy so how to handle missing values how to handle noisy data i'll tell you first handling uh, missing values right so in case of handling missing values you can do in many ways like sorry uh, you can replace it with na that is not applicable or na you can write in place of missing value or you can replace it with the mean value okay in case of normal distribution you can use this in case of if, if the data is normally distributed in that case you can replace with the mean value okay the mean value in the sense whatever remaining data is there apart from the missing data all the data you have to calculate the mean and with that mean you can replace got it next median values you can replace with the median values as well when you can replace with median values in case of non-normal distribution if the data is non normally distributed in that case you can replace with median if it is normal you can replace it with mean got it this is about handling missing values and we have some more don't worry sometimes you can also replace them with the most probable values that is the values uh, which can occur most probably got it that is there is a high chance for that value to occur okay and missing values can actually be filled in two ways actually have to say it in the beginning but i forgot manual automatic manual in the sense you can use it only for small data that is manually you will be filling you will be identifying the empty spaces and in that empty spaces you'll be filling the data but this will work fine only for small data sets got it and next is the automatic automatic is more efficient when compared to manual obviously and it suits for large data sets got it so after this we are done with handling missing values right now we have handling noisy data so in handling noisy data noisy data is nothing but inconsistent or error data we have several methods to do it we actually have three methods first is binning binning is new one for you and next is regression and clustering they are not new for you 
okay so binning what you will do is first you will sort the data okay along with the error values only you will be sorting the data once the data is sorted you will be storing those data into bins okay bins you will be creating bins and you will be creating the data into bins the stored data which is there you will be storing them into the bins once you store the data into bins what you will do is you will be doing the smoothing process smoothing process is nothing but removing the error values or replacing the error values got it and this smoothing process also can be done in three ways mean median boundary okay i'll tell you what is mean median boundary now don't worry so first in case of mean what you will do is the values which are present in the bin are replaced by the mean of mean value of the bin suppose if 2 3 4 5 are there in the bin okay and now 4 is the error value so what is the average of this bin now 2 plus 3 plus by 4 2 plus 3 is 5 5 plus 5 uh 10 14 14 by 4 will give you something around 3 point something right so that 3 point something will be replaced in place of all these values okay okay like that you will be replacing it with mean in case of smoothing by bin mean in case of smoothing by bin median method you will be replacing with the help of the median you know what is median right when you arrange the data from mean median mode in statistics we know but still i'll tell you when you arrange the data in the ascending order ascending order yeah ascending order only so that is small to big in any order like um, i think only ascending order okay i'm i'm sorry for that when you arrange the data in a particular order in ascending order or descending order then whichever value is in the middle of the uh, order uh, data set that is called as a median like we have 1 2 3 4 5 the data is in sorted way right here 3 is a median because 3 is in the mid of the list 1 2 4 5 two places two places it is in the middle right so that is why you replace with 3 okay that is about bin median next comes a bin boundary boundary means what min and max values you will be replacing it with the min and max values that's all simple okay this is about binning first you will sort the data you will store that sorted data into bins and then you will be applying smoothing any of the smoothing method you can apply got it next regression regression is nothing but numerical prediction of data so what is regression about regression everything in detail you will be learning in the next coming videos don't worry you can just write numerical prediction of data and leave it in case of exam in case of this data pre processing question next comes the clustering clustering also i have already explained uh, like similar data item similar uh, things are grouped into one cluster and whatever dissimilar items are there they are thrown out of the cluster so that the dissimilar items are nothing but the error items so that you can easily remove the error items got it this is about the clustering okay so this is about data cleaning in data cleaning we have two things handling missing data and handling noisy data noisy data is nothing but the error data okay in handling missing data we don't have any sub categories but in case of handling noisy data again we have three things binning regression clustering okay next is data integration i said the video is going to be very long so data cleaning itself took 6 minutes or 7 8 minutes and so data integration next next coming ones will be taking i don't think so they'll take more time okay that's okay let's go with the flow next the data integration right so data integration is nothing but you will be integrating the data into a single data set from the multiple sources multiple heterogeneous sources is nothing but mul different different types of sources different different types of data you will take okay homogeneous means everything uniform same right heterogeneous means different different types of data you can take numbers you can combine numbers words alphabets symbols words whatever it is you want you can combine H heterogeneous sources of data are combined into a single data set got it this is data integration okay and in data integration also it can be done in two ways okay that is tight coupling and loose coupling so what do you mean by tight coupling data is combined together into a physical location that is suppose you have data source a and data source b now what happens is you will be combining both a and b and you will be storing it into a separate physical location called as c that is when you come back to a or when you come back to b separately if you want to access to a or b you cannot do that in case of tight coupling okay once the data is integrated once you have combined the data you cannot again separately have access to the data in case of tight coupling whereas in case of loose coupling what happens is the data is actually not integrated okay only an interface will be created and data is combined through that interface and also access to that interface that is like a cloud kind of thing you can imagine like 
the data has not actually combined so here what you can do in case of loose coupling is you can have access to the combined data you can have access to the individual data as well because you are not physically combining the data you are combining the data only through an interface got it so like based on it 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 happens dynamically we can say like you know if you are asking for some mining uh, query then based on your query it will then and there itself combine the data and give you the result okay like that okay that is about data integration the word integration itself says you are combining something done after data integration we have data reduction so what do you mean by data reduction see actually if you are having large and large amount of data then the analysis of the data will become hard right so searching from 10 members is easy or searching from 1000 members is easy obviously 10 members right so if the volume of data is very high then the performance also will be low so for that reason in data reduction what you will be doing is the volume of the data is reduced in order to make the analysis easier okay so data is reduced and you can do it in two ways you can do the lossy and the lossless lossy means some of the data will be lost lossless means uh, you will no nothing no data will be lost everything will be as it is but the data will be compressed like we use online compressors right pdf compressor we will be using if sometimes uh, if if it is not supporting if it it has to be maximum 2 mb or 1 mb it will be like in some of the websites where we are uploading something we will be using compressors right so the same way volume of the data will be reduced in order to make the analysis easier okay and here we have several methods in data reduction i'll tell you what are those first one is the dimensionality reduction in dimensionality reduction what happens is it will reduce the number of input variables okay the number of input variables in the data set is reduced so that obviously automatically the data which is associated with those um, input variables also is reduced and performance will be increased if there are large number of input variables obviously dependencies also will be more right dependencies in the sense one variable depending on the other variable dependencies will be more the data will be more so once you remove the uh, input variables once you reduce the input variables then the dependencies will be reduced along with the data also will be reduced so that is why dimensionality that is what dimensionality reduction is next data cube aggregation in data cube aggregation what you will do is you will be combining the raw data that is uh, individual pieces of data will be combined together to construct a data cube okay i have already explained about what data cube in the first or second video i guess so you will be creating a data cube then whatever data is there with that data only we are creating the data cube right and then how data is reduced here the redundant data that is the duplicate data repeating data or the noising data if it is present that will be removed from the data and a uh, unique data cube will be generated got that it is about data cube aggregation next comes the attribute subset selection so here what happens is you will have so many attributes attributes are nothing but the columns okay you will have so many columns in the uh, data Uh, or in a table or in a data warehouse or in a data mining system you will have so many tables uh, sorry so many columns associated with a single table right attributes are nothing but columns okay so highly relevant attributes should be used others should be discarded that is others should be deleted removed so whatever are highly relevant in the sense related to the data or whichever are highly important only that data should be used other data has to be removed from the database got it so in this way also data can be reduced this is what called as the attribute subset selection next is numerosity reduction in data reduction only the fourth method here we store only model of data instead of the entire data instead of storing the entire data only model that is sample of the data so that if we test on this data or if we do any operations on this data it will be enough for example in our college only during lab exams or during project submissions what they will do they will get so many records 60 to 65 records they will get per class right per section depending on the strength of the section will they store all the records no right they will store only 5 to 6 records just for reference for the next year or for inspection or so they will not store everything so here also instead of storing the entire data they will store only sample or the model of the data got it that is about numerosity reduction so for with this we have completed data reduction 
okay next is data transformation so in data transformation you already know what is data transformation you will be transforming the data into appropriate form which is suitable for the data mining process like you cannot just randomly go and do the data mining process from a raw data like a b c if the data is arranged in form of a comma separated values or uh, you know you cannot just randomly go and uh, do data mining operations on which whatever data you want right it has to be suitable format so that will be done by the data transformation right the data transformation step will be transforming the data into suitable format and that also we have four methods again normalization so normalization is done in order to scale the data values in a specified range so this is not applicable for everything because they you cannot scale everything from a uh, range of 0 to 1 or 1 to negative 1 to positive 1 right sometimes you'll have names sometimes you'll have sections sometimes you'll have different different things it is not possible to always scale the data so whenever possible you can use this normalization if you want to arrange the data in a specified range you can go for normalization got it next after normalization we have attribute selection that is you will be creating new attributes by using the older ones by using the older attributes you will be creating the new attributes got it that is attribute selection simple next comes the discretization so in discretization raw values are replaced by interval discretization the word itself says raw values in the sense uh, suppose you have values like 10 12 13 14 21 22 30 4 like 36 like this so instead of 10 12 13 14 these will be replaced like from 10 to 20 these will be replaced like from 20 to 30 30 to 40 like that instead of raw values you'll be getting the you'll be generating the intervals for that okay next is concept hierarchy generation that is you are converting the attributes from low level to high level that is if city is an attribute let us take city is an attribute from city you are generating country you are you, you know you are uh, converting city into country city is what actually is an attribute country is also an attribute but city is a low level attribute whereas country is a high level attribute got it that is the difference between the city and country okay so concept hierarchy uh, means you will be converting the low level attributes into high level attributes that's all so this is all about this data pre processing uh, so i'm done with the video i know the video is long you guys and it is very hard for you people to remember all these headings as well i understand but still i try to make it as simple as i can so that's all that's all for this video let's meet up in the next coming video with another topic till then if you are still having any doubts just let me know in the comment section i'll be very happy to clear your doubts if i can and all the best for your exams thanks for watching the video till the end and i have started a new channel about study abroad content if you are interested have a look at the channel i'll give the link of the channel in the description let's meet up in the next coming video with another topic